What you're about to see is the result of our special enforcement unit's efforts to reach out to our homeless population over the course of two days. The individuals you'll see provided verbal consent to appear on camera, and those wishing to remain anonymous were accommodated. The causes, consequences, and solutions to homelessness are complex, but we hope this 35-minute short film will help shed some light on the matter. This unit generally handles quality of life issues. Uh, we have a six-man team here in El Cajon. And right now we are headed to the intersection of North Marshall and Billy Mitchell, reference a complaint that we received on our mobile app about multiple subjects camping with a lot of property. So right now we're going there with our full team and uh, two, two public works trucks with the city of El Cajon to uh, see what we can do to clean it up. Hello, anyone down there? Elko Police Department, anyone down there in the canal? Hello, anyone down there? What's your name? Oh, how you doing, man? Uh, the reason why we're contacting you is because you're trespassing the drainage canal. You're not supposed to be down here, you know that? You don't know that? There's signs posted throughout the city. You, you don't have any weapons close to you? No, don't, no, no, don't leave that. Just toss everything right here. Toss the meth pipe right here. Do you have any more weapons? Here, stand up. We're, we're just going to pat you down because you have two different kn yeah, knives on you. Stand up. Hey, can I talk to you over here? Can you just walk away from this property you have? We can just lean up against the wall right now. I just want to talk to you. So you said you've been living down here for five years? I've talked to you several times, right? I've contacted you probably about no less than five times. Do you want to go to the available shelter in the city? Okay. Advise and clear for a bite serial number. Okay, we're just checking. How much was it? Three six hundred. Wow. Do you want to get help or no? You're content. What what kind of resources would help you the, the most? Housing. Have you ever been over to East, East County Transitional Living though? There's some place that they'd have a uh, shelter available today. We could take you over there if that's something you're interested. In. You're good. You've rather lived down here in the drains, storm drains. Are you? Are you able to tell your story on camera? Okay, just thought I'd ask. Any pipes or any needles in here, ma'am? No. Uh, when you do smoke meth, do you, do you use needles? No. So no needles in the tent? No. Okay. Do you guys know it's uh, illegal, it's trespassing to be in the drainage canals? That's why we're talking to you today. No? How long have you been on the streets? But what's too long? How long, how long ago was that? 12 or 13 years ago? How come her passing got you on the streets? What happened? Uh, all of my resources, all, all, all of my uh, support group, uh, support, my support system just fell apart. Okay. And uh, I didn't want to be a burden to anybody, so uh, I just came out here and next thing you know, 13 years later. What would be helpful for you to try to, are, are you trying to get I've been working with the old Okay. Karina. Karina? When's the last time you talked to her? Last week, because I want to go to two times more. Okay. We can, do you want us to call and see? Why do you? Okay. Do you guys have anything illegal over by your tent? No? Do we use any street drugs? Meth once in a while? Okay. When you say once in a while, when was the last time you used? Yesterday. And so I knew had a warrant. Um, immediately saw him, put him in cuffs. Uh, he obviously denied having a warrant. 
Um, but from there, he was placed under arrest for his warrant. Uh, in the state of California, he has a fourth waiver. Uh, he was seen in and around the tent. He confirmed that some of the property inside the tent was his. Uh, the blue bag, there was probably maybe a half ounce of methamphetamine located. Uh, on the chair that the bag is sitting, there was a bunch of Ziploc baggies, which a lot of narcotic users package out um, if they're selling it. Uh, on the bin over there was a digital scale. In my hand, I also have another two digital scales and some more meth that was located in the tent. Uh, so he's gonna end up uh, going to jail for his warrant um, and then possession of methamphetamine for sales. Um, based on the scales, baggies, the quantity, I'll have to go back to the station way and test the dope out, but uh, through my training, he's gonna be going for possession of meth for sales. How come you never took, took me up on the shelter I offered months ago? You didn't offer me no shelter. I you sure did. You see, yeah, you're saying it. Well, yeah, but that's not a shelter. That is shelter. It's an emergency shelter that's available right now in the city. Is that something you'd want to do if I brought you over there right now? Just try the program out, you know? Mm -hmm. Because I don't want anybody trying to spell religion down my throat. I'm prescribed to religion. No, I totally get that. And you, you can make up your own decisions. However, that's a place where you'll get a roof over your head, three meals a day. Mm -hmm. Just heal it out, you know what I mean? Well, everybody that's been through it, and I have some people that are good people that have been through it. They're bad-mouthing it because they don't want anyone, they don't want rules. People don't, listen, hold on, they want to stay in their ways, they want to stay in their addictions, their habits. I understand um, that, but, like, but that's not good for you, you know what I mean? All right, so for both of you, I'm cutting you a break on being in the canal, okay? Um, if you are in a drainage canal in the city of El Cajon, it is trespassing, okay? There is a municipal code. I'm cutting you both a break, but Alonzo, you did have a little bit of meth on you. You'll get a ticket for that, okay? I'm going to cite you out, and then you'll be on your way. You've always been nice. I appreciate that. Yeah. Alonzo, really quick, you have the right to remain silent. Do you understand? Anything you say, maybe he's in court. Do you understand? You have the right to the presence of an attorney before and during any question. Do you understand? If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you, free of charge for any question if you want. Do you understand your rights, Alonzo? Okay. Uh, with that in mind, uh, I know when I asked you, right, are you still using methamphetamine? Uh, sparingly. Sparingly? Uh, we just handed you a homeless outreach brochure that has basically a lot, probably half the stuff that Officer Bellwood was talking to you about. Um, there's rehab facilities on there and shelter locations, okay, along with other places where you can go get showered up, things like that. So please look through it today and work on getting out of here for me, okay? Questions? So down in the Strange Canal, we contacted two different encampments, one solo occupant um, and three over here on this, in this tunnel. Um, of the four contacted, uh, all refused shelter. One was arrested for sales of uh, controlled substance, and the other two are going to be able to pack up their belongings here. What they leave behind, we'll have our truck back up, and we'll take the debris out of here. Are there any resources that you need out here? I know I've provided you with that, that brochure before. Um, I know I've offered East County Transitional Living. Were you able to think about that over the weekend? Is that something you want to go now to, to emergency shelter? No? Is there a reason why you don't want to go there? You don't want to go to program? Correct, but if that, if that program Provides a roof over your head, three meals a day, gets you in touch with all the social services you need. Don't you think that'd be a good opportunity to get your off the street? Yeah, I mean, it's probably the dumb, yeah. But you don't want to go today? Yeah, I'm not particularly Okay. Do you mind if I ask how much you get for social security a month? Uh, 1100 1100 Do you, like, put that money aside and save? Yeah, yeah, I've save been saving or? enough. I've been saving enough for quite a while, about two years. Because if you got, if they help you get some resources and get you into housing, they will help use that money to, to pay for the housing. Yeah. So we got to address and fix this problem because you're always on their property. Target calls in a lot saying there's a trespasser that just refusing to leave. Um, how are we going to fix that if you don't take advantage of any of the resources within the community? There's literally a shelter two miles that way that we're offering to bring you to, but you don't want to go.
I'll check in with you weekly, like I have been doing, and whenever you want, I'll drive you over there. But if you want to go before that, start walking. It's 1527 East Main Street if you change your mind after this contact, okay? okay. This has a bunch of homeless service in, services in here, including the shelters that I talked to you about, mental health services, rehab recovery, which I think you get some use out of. We're over here at uh, Target over in the parking lot. We're with uh, a gentleman we know uh, from a lot of contacts. Uh, he usually just hangs out in this area here. Um, once in a while he'll shoplift from Target. Not high dollar items, but um, just usually like food and stuff like that. Um, he's been provided uh, resources such as uh, shelter and um, rehab and stuff like that. And uh, it doesn't seem very interested in going. There's always been a drug problem here. Uh, when I first started, I saw a lot of heroin, where now I see mostly uh, fentanyl and uh, meth. Meth has always been kind of a, a, com a common problem. We're just here uh, talking to different people. Do you mind being on camera? You don't care? Okay. You mind if we ask you some questions? Okay. Uh, are you homeless right now? Yeah, you're living on the streets. How long have you been on the streets? About a year and a half. Oh, okay. Where's your family live? Right here at the ranch. Oh, okay. Is that what kind of brought you over in this area? Yeah. Yeah. Where's your family now? I have no idea. Oh, okay. So once they left, that kind of caused you to become homeless? No. I became homeless because I was with my family, but she told me not to, not to get high. Okay. And I eventually, uh, um, I eventually did like six months clean, and I eventually um, ended up getting high again. So where would you, get, where were you getting high on? I, I got high, on, I got high on weed and meth. Do you still have a drug addiction problem? Well, nah. How, how often do you smoke meth? I, I almost, I haven't even taken. When's the last time you smoked meth? This morning? Nah, a couple of days ago. A couple of days ago? I'm just kind of hungry and thirsty. Yeah. How do you get money for, for like, your habits? Uh, the, the neighbors right there where my police live, they, they help me out. If we were able to find you some resources, would you accept them? Like, if I could say I could get you housing, emergency shelter right now, get you a roof under your head, get you meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, is that something yet that you would take us up on? I would appreciate it, but no, nah, right now I'm good. I'm, I'm kind of working right now. I'm what, doing something. what kind of work are you, are you doing? Because you can still get emergency shelter while you're working. So we can make a call right now and see if we can find some kind of shelter for you. If that has nothing to do with your employment. If anything, it's going to help you get back on your feet. Because then you'll have a shelter and a job. Maybe uh, something that, is there a reason why you don't want it? Honestly, like, what, do you like being on the streets? Do you, would you prefer this lifestyle? Um, I'm, on the streets, I'm looking for my family right now. I can't find them. What's that have to do with getting a shelter, though? Nothing, I just, I need to be on the streets. You'd rather look for your family while being on the streets? I'm looking for my family all over. I'm looking for my family in Zacatecas. Well, your, your house is a shelter. It's not going to prevent you from leaving. You're not going to be confined to that, you know? Let's talk to Karina. She said they could do a housing assessment for him. He doesn't want it. No? No. Oh, you okay, thank you. I appreciate it. He doesn't want shelter if we, even if we can get it. Okay. All right, well, we're here all the time. Um, if you ever need resources from us, just reach out to us. Thank you, gentlemen. Or in case you change your mind, there's everything available to you. All right. Thank you. All right, man. Hi, 
How are you doing? Can you put the scissors down? Do you mind having a seat right here, away from your stuff? Yeah. Do you use uh, any uh, narcotics in the street? Do you no. use meth or fentanyl or anything like that? No. Doesn't uh, your friends Jason and use? Uh, I don't talk about other people behind their back, so I don't know. Because a lot of people are actors, so a lot of people like pretend like they're drinking or whatever. So every single person that I know is like a multi-millionaire and they're actors. Not just a regular actor, but like a really good actor. Like yeah. Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt, so I can't say. So you, you have a house in Santee, but you choose to be homeless in El Cajon? It's yeah, I'm familiar with that. Okay, just confirming you don't you don't use you don't use meth or any no, drugs. Uh -uh. Okay, so not interested in rehabilitation services. You own a house in uh, yes, El Cajon over here. House, yes. Okay, and you don't want to go to shelter. You want to remain on the city sidewalks, correct? Um, yeah, well, I have a house. I just don't. Well, because I have a sprained ankle, it's much better now. And I actually travel the nation usually for triathlons, but I have a back injury because I fell off my mountain bike. So as soon as I'm completely healed, my ankle's better. As soon as my back's completely healed, I have a I just bought a one-year gym membership at Crunch, so the pool's opening any day. I'm gonna start swimming, and then I'll start jogging and hiking. I do martial arts. Good for you. Um, that's, that's awesome. LA, I was just more so trying to solve the issue of you sleeping on the sidewalk. You know. I'm Denise, and I am the property manager and agent for the owner here at Main Street Mercantile, located on East Main Street here in El Cajon. Every week we have either a service repair or graffiti removal, and those costs add up, and those go back to our tenants who are trying to run businesses, just like we are. We've had to install a live surveillance system, so we have cameras throughout the property, so we're able to connect to the police quicker than if I was on property, because I can't be here all the time. So businesses have what we call an illegal lodging on file, a letter on file. Uh, which they sign with the city. It's a contract. Uh, it's good for a few years. It prevents anybody from hanging out in that property. Uh, if there is anybody that has established uh, a residence, uh, we can enforce it with uh, placing them under a, an arrest for 647E, uh, which is illegal lodging. Uh, from there, they get a citation. They have to clear up the area and remove themselves. Uh, if they refuse, uh, sometimes we have to take their property and them back to the station or will they get released uh, with a citation? No, no, don't put your hands in your pockets. Just grab a seat, I'm gonna take that out for you. Just don't reach for it. You're good, grab a seat. Any more, what is this? A baton? Yeah, I've got a resin on it. Pretty good, sir. Not an arrest, just being detained, okay? Thank you. Any other weapons on you, man? How many times have we been out here to talk to you about this? Over and over. Over and over. But, man, it's, it's not okay. Do you realize you're in front of businesses, blocking the sidewalk? This business, in fact, is for handicapped children. So with that being said, do you think there may be a child in a wheelchair? Yes, sir. Do we think a wheelchair could fit by right here? No, sir. No. Thank you. That's the concern, man. And there's resources. How many times have you been offered a resource? Every time? Um, yes, sir. I think, okay. I think, I think the point I missed my appointment. You missed your appointment for which, which program? Okay, Home Start? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, they're also there in the front parking lot of PD every morning, every 9 a.m. on Friday. Yeah. You just got to go, man, right? The only thing stopping you from getting placement is yourself, right? Yes, sir. Yes, At this point in time, you are being placed under arrest for that baton, okay? We got a hold of your son. He's coming to get your dog. Yep, and I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put your knife, your lighters, all that stuff in your backpack because it can't go with you, okay? The phone, your wallet, your money, and your phone charger is going with you. Anything else you need? We we don't know the details of the case. They just said that when I gave them your name, that you were someone they were looking for. I just left my girlfriend right now. I mean, uh, 
Yeah, it sounds like patrol was looking for you after after whatever happened happened. Um, we have the SEU units out here, um, and I heard them run a subject that was wanted earlier from a domestic violence case. So I came out here, met with them, and then the subject was placed under arrest. We had several uh, Elkhorn uh, City app complaints uh, for this location. If you look at it now, it's, it's looking much cleaner, uh, but this whole entire sidewalk was blocked and there was uh, several individuals here. This is directly in front of a, an East County uh, training center, um, specifically for people uh, with disabilities. So Antonio, uh, we are familiar with him. Uh, he is or was in the process with Homestart. They were working with him to try to get him into permanent housing off the streets. Um, and Antonio has not uh, made any of his last appointments um, to follow through on his end to, to help. It's a long process uh, to, to get into permanent housing and he's not following through on his end. A lot of times people don't understand why we aren't arresting everybody or they'll call us to our area and we go and clear it out like we've been doing. And hours later, the next day, either the same people return or other people seeing that that spot is open return. So it gives the perception that we're not necessarily doing anything. A lot of times these people are getting arrested, um, whether it's for illegally lodging or possession of, of drugs but those are our tickets. Sometimes people have warrants and those are bookable. They'll go into jail for a couple hours, maybe a couple of days. And then when they come back out, uh, a lot of times they, they tend to go to the same area that we had already found them in. People think that we're not doing anything or trying to, to help them out. I also can totally understand uh, from their perception. I mean, if I, was to, to come out of my house every morning and someone's doing drugs and everything else, I would be upset too. So we try to do as much as we can. So they're just going around and just seeing kind of what, what it's like being out here. Um, what's that? It sucks. It sucks, all right. <laughs> nice, I hadn't seen you in a while. It's, it's good. You look good. Where'd you go to high school? Alcohol High. Did you graduate? How far did you go? 11th grade. Why? Why did you leave? So I just kind of told them that I've known you for a while. So they were just wondering if they could kind of interview you, just to tell them kind of your story a little bit, because I know you were off the street and then kind of back on. Yeah. It's up to you. You don't have to. Okay. Cool. Well, me and my husband were out here for 20 years. We finally got a place to live, sold that one and got a new one. And he died on me. He passed away and that's how I ended up back out here again. Where are you from? Around here. Oh, you grew up around here? No, I didn't grow up around here. I've, I've been all over. Yeah. I was, I born in Newport, Rhode Island. Then I've been lived in North Carolina, South Carolina, New York, and all that, you know. And then we landed here. And then my mom passed away. Seven months later, my husband passed away, and I was couldn't afford the rent, so I'm back out here again. Hopefully, to get matched with a program. Have you tried any like ECTLC at all? Where are you? I will not go there because they will want me to get rid of my dog and I'm not getting rid of my dog. But I'm with Homestart, Crisis House, um, another one. I can't rem remember the, na the name of it, but yeah. And that's about it. You're welcome. Donna Cuppins. Donna? Thank you, Donna. You're welcome. Hey, Hispa guy, how you doing? 
Oh, okay. You got shot? Can you keep your hands out of your pockets for me? No, that's fine, but I don't. No. Can you go grab a seat? Just grab a seat next to her. Oh my God, why don't you have that wrapped up? Really? Turn, turn. Jesus Christ, did it go inside of you or did it just nick your skin? The little things that go in the concrete to shoot nails in the concrete net, they're like the blanks. Someone shot her with it? I think so, I think so. You have to be pressed up against it to pull, it, yeah, yeah. pull that trigger on that, right? So you've been homeless out here in Oklahoma for eight years? Eight years, yeah. Eight, eight years. years, and yeah. you didn't have this vehicle before, right? You were no, camping? No, no, I've been, I was just on the street, yeah. Are you in any programs right now with Homestart or any no, housing? No, I was with Equus. Um, they kicked me off after 10 months because I didn't have her on a controlled leash. Your dog's name Snickers, right? Snickers, yes, it's okay. Snickers, that's my baby. Have you been uh, to any of the shelters in the, in the, in the region? No, 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 I haven't, no, I haven't. Any substance abuse issues out here? Yes, there is, yes. What yes. do you use? Uh, meth and marijuana. Do you, you smoke or you, you inject I smoke. it? No, I don't, I never inject it. I don't do needles, I never have. You smoke it daily, you think, roughly? I, well, before, yeah, I hear. Uh, you can be honest now. No, I mean, no, 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 I'm being honest. With if, you. if you smoked yesterday, just, just, just be no, honest with me. No, I haven't smoked, I haven't smoked in a couple of days. A couple of days, I, okay. I, I just do it periodically when I, can, when I feel like I can. Where do you obtain this methamphetamine when you uh, were using it heavily? <sighs> Just people out here. It's easier to access than food or money. Is it other homeless individuals that yeah. you get the, the methamphetamine from? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is there a certain area of the city where you you go if you want to pick up some? No. No. It's pretty much anywhere. Pretty much. It's either that or fentanyl. But I do not do fentanyl. Yeah. Okay. Have you been into any treatment programs like McAllister? No. No. I've looked into it a little bit, not a whole lot. But I just don't want to lose my dog. I mean, yeah. that's the thing right there. I don't want to lose my dog. I mean, my dog was. Reference uh, overdoses, do you see a lot out here? I see quite a bit out here. Yeah. Have uh, you rolled up on any where you see someone down and you you administer Narcan or anything like that? Uh, just about a month ago, I was behind over there behind 24 Hour Fitness and two of them passed. I mean, we're right there, 100 feet from here to that tree there. Uh, two of them were down? Yeah, two of them down from fentanyl overdoses. Well, did they make it, do you know? One of them didn't make it, no. One of them did not make it? No, I didn't. Did you know that person? Uh, by passing through. I, I stay away from anybody that does fentanyl. I mean, somebody does fentanyl, I just completely break them away because I get attached to people. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get attached to people. I got a big heart. That's why you see all these people hanging out in my car. I mean, oh, come on in. I've had any rest. Can I rest? Yeah, come on in. Does anyone want to go to um, emergency shelter, ETTLC? I'll take you right now. No, they'll keep me for a year. Three, three meals a day, <laughs> roof over your head, work program, get you tested with social services. Anyone going to take me up on that? I'll take me to Jack in the Box. <laughs> There's a Jack in the Box right over there too. There's a closer one to ECTLC. All right, guys. Well, Target obviously doesn't want you trespassing on their property, so we'll give you about 10 minutes to clear out of here, okay? I really definitely recommend not confronting individuals. Ultimately, document it on your end. Maybe everyone's got a smartphone, right? Video the situation so that when we get there, if it's not occurring, we could at least have that to reference. Both of them? Uh, yeah, you call him over, I'll call him over. Do you mind grabbing a seat right here on this curb, just so we're out of the way? Do you have a water bowl, bowl if I get you some water? Okay. You got food? Yeah. The Humane Society will give you food for free. But no, if I you need it, though, just grab a seat. Oh, yeah. Hi, Bobus. Hi. Do you have an idea on you, sir? What's the most you make from panhandling? Maybe 25, 30. 25, 30 bucks? And what, what kind of time span? 15 minutes, 20 minutes. 20 minutes? I'm not out there long. I don't. I try to get by. You know? What do you spend the money on? Things I can't use the food card for. Beer? No. Yeah. Vodka. Vodka. Uh, Sorry. No, it's okay. How much do you typically make? 25, 30 bucks. I'm 25, 30. What's a good day? I made it quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. What's quite a bit? It's like 70 bucks here sometimes. 70 bucks? And how long does that take to get to? Two, three hours. Two, three hours? What, what's the uh, biggest, you know, 
denomination you've gotten? 20s? I got a $100 once. Right? $100 bill once. All right. You do time, hard time, or just county? No, no. You got that in county or outside? I got my no, outside. Yeah? What's that mean to you? Yeah, you had to earn that? Yeah. What types of things would you have to do to I'm earn racist. such? Yeah. You're what? Racist. You're a racist? Yeah. Okay. Were you clicked up as a youngster? Yes. With who? AB? American Nazi Party. Have your views changed on what this means to you? Yes. It does? Yeah, oh yeah. You good, partner? People are good. Yeah, just, just search. Oh. Would you say you have a problem with alcohol? No, yeah, it used to be meth. It used to be meth? meth. Good. How'd you get clean? The program or by yourself? Yeah, 98. Oh, so you've been clean for some time. Yeah, and but the alcohol, yeah. But when when you got off the meth, was it through a program or your own will? Kill and McAllister. Okay, so through a program, McAllister. So, so, So are you comfortable with this lifestyle? No. No? So you'd be willing to change that lifestyle? Oh, this lifestyle? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why don't you go to East County Transitional Living Center? They got beds available. I smoke. So you'd have to give up the booze and the smoking? Well, the smoking, yeah. You know, every coffee. And I don't know. So, so you rather have your smokes and your pup than, than have the shelter? Just yeah, that I'm understanding, yeah. Craig? Yeah, fair enough. Are you, are you homeless on the streets right now? Um, I'm not homeless, but I'm... Where do you where do you stay where do you sleep at? Um, I sleep in different areas. Like um, I slept up by Granite Hills last night. At outside the or oh, outside the church? Um, um, yeah, it was outside the church. Oh, okay. You have any drug addictions? Um, you be honest. You're not in trouble for it. I don't. I don't really have any drug addictions. Um, but when people offer me a little bit of meth, sometimes I use it. Cause yeah. Well, the doctor told me when I was younger that it would probably be better than marijuana if I hit 40 and my, my chest starts hurting from the bullet wound and bleeding again. Huh. So. How often? Uh, do you get meth for free? Um, well, I just smoke it, like, when they offer. Like if When they offer, do you have to pay, pay them money or do you just get it for free? No, but I have offered money, like, I'll be like, hey, when I'm really in pain right yeah. here on this side and I know what it's from, I, I, and I see people that are just like covering and smoking or something. I'll be like, hey, can I give you a dollar or something to take a hit just to help the steroid? Like, oh, okay. So the meth helps you feel a little bit better when you're in pain? Well, it helps to see the inside that's like leaking. Oh. And, and abrupted and ruptured. Just had three different people on three sides of this intersection, all, all panhandling. Uh, talking to them, it uh, kind of fell in line with just other statements we get from other people that are panhandling. They typically make about 30 to $35 an hour um, while they're out here. Typically, the money that they receive from folks is spent on whatever addiction they're battling, whether it's alcohol or drugs, uh, because the money that they're getting through EBT or other services can't be spent on that. It's spent on their food and, and just their overall uh, ways to get by.